Uh, it's, my, it's my special pleasure tonight to, to introduce uh, Jim Clifton, and I'm going to do so with an enthusiasm that may embarrass him, or otherwise John Hope Bryant's going to come up here and make me do it all over again. <laughs> uh, uh, of course, Jim is best known as chairman and CEO of the Gallup organization since 1988, when he followed the pioneer in polling and, re po polling, and polling research, Dr. George Gallup. Uh, Jim has continued the great tradition of the Gallup organization, uh, and he has built upon it, growing Gallup 15 times the size uh, since he took over as CEO, and among other things, creating some new innovations uh, in polling, including the Gallup World Poll, which polls citizens seven, samples 7 billion citizens around the world in 100 countries to try to know what's on the mind of the world, uh, as well as the Gallup Hope Index, which tracks uh, youth attitudes and what's on the mind of youth. I first, first met Jim this fall at one of our series of Visionary Voices webinars for our university students where they peppered him for an hour with questions about career advice that he patiently answered. Uh, and we are happy to web webcast his remarks uh, again tonight, as well as the rest of the proceedings tonight and tomorrow on our Kaplan X website. Uh, X used to stand for uh, adult racy content, but now it's a very trendy thing within higher education. Uh, <laughs> You can follow uh, uh, Kaplan X. It's an open course resource. Uh, if, uh, if John lets you out for a little while, you can still follow at www.kapx.net for the live webcast uh, of the summit for the next two days. As you can imagine, Jim has served on many boards, uh, uh, and he's currently chairman of the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. He holds several honorary doctorates, uh, and Jim has found time with all this somehow recently to write a book called The Coming Jobs War. Uh, he told our students this fall to be sure to read the book uh, through, uh, all the way through to the, through the second, some of the best parts are in the second half. Uh, what I told our students is read the book all the way through and then read it again, because what Jim has to say is so important. So everybody, please welcome uh, Mr. Jim Clifton, Chairman and CEO of Gallup. Hey guys, um, it, it's great to be with you. You know, John, typically when I'm here, I'm, I'm here as a guest or a friend of John's. Uh, now I'm actually part of Operation Hope, so, so, but, it feel, but it feels great. You know, <clears throat> John, I say the same things over and over again, but good Lord, the timing on your mission and what you're up to, you know, for what the country needs just, just couldn't be better. I, a, a hero in my life, sort of my Jesus Christ, I, outside the regular Jesus Christ, is, uh, do is Dr. George Gallup. And he had a great line. He was an academic, but he had a mission. And his mission was that if democracy is about the will of the people, then somebody should go find out what that will is. But that's all it was. He, he, did, he didn't say, <clears throat> he didn't go on to make it real complicated. He just said find out what it was. But see, his problem was is that if leaders misread their constituencies, then they make policies and they go out and lead, and the more they lead, the worse they make everything. And so for us, when we lead, if we can be sure about our premises and our assumptions, then when we go out and lead, the more we work, the better we make it. So a good question that you might have is, well, what is the will of the world right now? Well, he, he had a question. He called it the great American dream. And over the years, <coughs> excuse me, uh, as you can tell, my voice isn't perfect tonight. But over the years, the great American dream, and Dr. Gallup started this 75 years ago, has been basically peace. It's been to have a family, to have freedom, independence, be able to pray to the God that they want to. But that's been the will of America. That's just changed. Now, when I tell you what it's changed to, it's going to sound a little bit subtle, but it changes everything. The will has gone from peace, independence, having a family, praying to the God I want, to having a good job. Everything changed. Now, if you want, to, want me to tell you just a few real simple ones, here's one. We get married later than we used to. That changes the whole fabric, or we don't get married at all. You see how much it changes, just something as basic as that? Here's one. We have fewer children now, or we don't have any children at all. That changes the whole fabric of the United States of America. 
You see what a, a difference a will makes? Here's something else. How you and I see ourselves in relationship to our community and to our country, to our God, now is in relationship to a job, not our independence. Not, I mean, all those other things are important, but now this is the very top one. But that means as leaders, and John, that's why your mission and purpose in life is such a bullseye right now. But it's to have a good job. It also changes how managers have to treat people. Before, we could just treat them like workers, like a pair of hands, and that was it. Now we've got to treat them like a human being and an individual, and we've got to actually care about their development. But if we don't do those things, then this country can't make the comeback that, that, we, that we so desperately need. I want to speed this up. But, so we do a poll of, uh, uh, in 160 countries. gets 98% of the population, and I'll make this real fast. We asked them what, the, what their will was. You think it might be hunger? You might think it's religion, all that. I'll just speed it. it it's a job, too. What the whole world wants is a good job. But as leaders, if we don't understand that and take our science and drill down, 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 and then powerful organizations like this make that their primary mission, we're not going to experience the human development we need to keep this place together. You know, there's a story, and John, I know you tell this, I know you tell this too. One of the most profound changes in the world right now is the Arab Spring. Everything is changing. When the Middle East changes and those countries keep falling, and who knows what countries will fall next. And it all started why? It started because a guy with the food stand named uh, Mohammed uh, uh, Bouazizi. Mohammed Bouazizi. Remember what he did? He's in Tunisia and he sets himself on fire. Sets himself on fire, burns to death, and the whole world changes. Here's the pop quiz. Ambassador, by the way, everybody in Washington in, in charge of foreign policy, I ask him this quiz. Mohammed Bouazizi shouted something as he set himself on fire, and the whole world heard it. Here's your, here's what he, here's, here's your pop quiz. Did he, did he shout, Allahu Akbar, which is God is great, which is something terrorists shout? Is that what he shouted? Did he shout death to America? What did he say? I just want to work. But you know what we've done? Because as leaders, we don't understand that will of the world. We keep dealing with religion, and we keep dealing with the relationship between that population of people and us, when what it really is is just about, just about having a good job. In a way, the whole world is Muhammad. We're all Muhammad. That's what we want to. That's what we want too. But it's so hard to keep our sights on that particular that particular mission. You know, um, I, I don't know if I've ever been asked so many times in my whole life which president would be better for the United States. God, I got asked that question a lot. Romney or Obama? I don't think it matters that much. With all due respect. For the issue at hand, and Ambassador, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost solicitous. The John Kennedy remark just fits so well. Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Don't look at the president. Don't look at Washington. That's not how you fix this. You and I have to fix it. And every time we look at Washington to fix the jobs problem and say, we don't have any jobs, we need a new president, the worse it's going to get until we look at each other and say, what are we going to do to fix America? We won't get it fixed. But John, that's why the mission and spirit and purpose of this organization could not be more important, because that's what the very heart and soul of this, this, this place is. I want to try to mathematically describe, you know our GDP, not to bore you with macroeconomics, but it, the blended average is below 2% right now. That doesn't work. We are absolutely going broke as a country. That's not, that's not too breathless. We're absolutely going broke. And if you said, what is the core problem? And, and this, John, I think is so important for the mission of our, our organization. It cannot be fixed with fiscal policy. It cannot be fixed by lowering or raising taxes. None of those damn things work. None of them. Because organic job creation is a spirit, not a fiscal policy, and nobody knows that. And unless that spirit is strong, unless it is just shooting through the roof, we'll never fix this. And that's something only you and I can, you and I can fix. 
By the way, here's the problem. We need to be starting new companies at a rate of about a million a year. Or else this country, we at least lose our leadership of the free world. Right now we've fallen under 400,000. That's the biggest problem we have. The biggest problem we have is a spirit and we don't have job creation, which is new business startup. We're running at about 360 or 380,000. That's our run rate right now and it's going down. Who's gonna fix that? That's the mission that this, this, organization, this organization has. As John said, there are 30 million kids in middle school and high school. Those are our players for the future. And every single one of them has to win. Every single one of them has to, be, has to have their potential maximized. It doesn't matter if it's, that, if it's that little guy that's not very likable. It doesn't matter if it's the next Barack Obama. It doesn't matter if it's the next Steve Jobs. Every single one of them, somehow we've got to maximize their potential. If we don't win, we can't bring this, we can't bring this, this country back. So Operation Hope and Gallup has done a poll, and this is what, this is, there's, there's no metrics in America that's more important than the ones I'm going to tell you. And John, you and Operation Hope, and me and I, all of us in Operation Hope, and Tim, thank you for recruiting me. These are the numbers that we've got to own. Of the 30 million kids, when we say to them, I want to start my own business, 45% of them say yes. When we say to them, I will invent something that changes the world, 45% of them say, I will. There's enough spirit there for this country to rewind the world, and, and there's no limits to what we can become, because that's enough energy. But here's the number that you and I have to own. And, this is, and, and again, John, this has got to be the number that we own here in this organization. When we say to them, how many of you are in an internship or mentor mentorship, that group, that number is 5%. That's the failure of America. But you see, if our goal, and then we achieve that, can be to go, you don't have to go from 5 to 100%. You know what fixes it? Because John and I have worked on this. It's just 5 to 20. If we can go from 5% to 20%, like a magic trick, we ourselves put America back on track, back on her leadership of the, of the free world, and we can do, and we and we can do that. Um, but I just wanted to say, John, your mission's right, our mission's right, because it all begins with financial literacy. And if if we don't embrace financial literacy, if we don't look at every little guy, every little man, and every boy and girl, and say, are they financially literate? And we say to them, but, but again, as John said, and I was kind of crude, I thought, the way he introduced me, but I look at every single, in, every single individual, I don't look at them as a human being anymore. I did when I was a YMCA counselor. I look at them as an American asset. And what you've got to say is, how do we maximize it? Because there's only 30 million of them. The Chinese, you know, of course, have hundreds, but, but we, we'll beat them again. We've been beating them for 230 years. We'll keep beating them for another 200, 230 years. But until there's financial literacy and until we meet the goals here, we, we, we won't bring the country back. But uh, thank you for being here. The mission and purpose of this organization is very rich, and it means a lot to me to be a part of it, and thank you all for, for being here.